Do you know how to implement the factory method pattern in Python? Hi, my name is Sean Campbell from Campbell Tech, and today I'm going to show you how to implement the factory method pattern in Python. Did you know that the factory pattern is one of the most used design patterns? The factory pattern is a creational design pattern that forms part of the gang of four design patterns, which is used to create objects without exposing the creation logic to the client and refers to newly created objects using a common interface. In layman's terms, it basically encapsulates object creation and then decouples it from the client code that uses that object. This can improve your code maintainability, flexibility and reusability. You might ask, but why implement the factory pattern? Can't we just instantiate our objects in our client code? And that's a good question. Some of the benefits of using the factory pattern includes encapsulating object creation and reducing coupling, providing a central point of control and configuration for object creation, promoting the open close principle by allowing new subclasses to be added without modifying existing code, and enabling testing and mocking of the client code without actually instantiating real objects. Okay, so now let's look at a class diagram of the factory method pattern to further cement your understanding. Now, there are a few important artifacts to take note of. The creator, which is the factory, the client code, the abstract product, and the concrete products. Now remember, the factory method pattern allows us to create objects without exposing the creation logic to the client code and refers to newly created objects using a common interface. So firstly, you can see that the client doesn't directly instantiate any of these concrete products. So that is what the creator is for. The creator is the factory and the create product method is the factory method that returns the abstract product. In other words, the newly created objects will be one of the concrete products and the factory method will refer to these newly created objects using a common interface, which is the abstract product. Now let's look at our use case and then it will make much more sense. Now we are going to base our implementation on a payment options or payment methods use case. So here you can see that we have a payment factory with a factory method that returns that common interface that we were talking about, the payment interface. The payment interface contains a single method pay that takes in an amount. And then we have three concrete products, including the credit card payment, PayPal payment and Google Pay payment. In other words, we have three payment options, credit card, PayPal and Google Pay. And then each of these concrete classes will implement the pay method. So in other words, the client code will not directly instantiate the credit card payment, PayPal payment or Google Pay payment classes. Instead, it'll simply pass a payment method value, for example, Google Pay, and then the factory method will return the Google Pay payment, but it will refer to it using the common interface payment. Okay, so let's go ahead and code the factory method pattern. So here in VS Code, I've simply gone and opened up a folder that contains no contents. So the first thing that we need to do to start our Python program is to hold Control Shift and P and then you can type python colon creates environment and then we need to select a virtual environment for our current workspace and i'm going to go for vnv and then go ahead and select the interpreter i'm going to select the one in bin forward slash python 3. now let's give it some time to create the environment and you'll see that it created this dot vnv folder with all of the required files in it. And then the first thing that we are going to do is to create the payment interface that you saw on the UML class diagram. Now, importantly, in Python, you do not get interfaces like you would typically get in C-sharp or Java. 
So we are going to create an abstract class. So go ahead and create a new file and call it payment.py. And then we are going to import and extend the abstract base class. So go ahead and say from ABC and then say import ABC comma abstract method because we are going to define an abstract method that each of the concrete payment classes needs to implement. Then say class payment, that's the name of our abstract class, and then we are going to extend ABC. Now, if we go to the ABC definition for a minute by pressing F12, you'll see that it's a helper class that provides a standard way to create an ABC using inheritance. And the ABC stands for abstract base class. And then we are going to define a single abstract method using the abstract method annotation. And then let's define our method. Let's call it pay. Now this is going to be an instance method on the classes that implements it. So the first parameter should always be self. And then the only method parameter is an amount of type float. Okay. And then since we are not implementing it here, simply pass. Next, let's go ahead and create our concrete implementations. But before we do that, let's create a package. So go ahead and create a new folder and I'm going to call it payment methods. And then let's move our payment abstract class into this folder. And then let's also go ahead and create our concrete payment classes in this payment methods package. So say new file and call it credit card payment.py. Now let's go ahead and create all the files and then we'll implement the classes. So let's create another file and call it PayPal underscore payment. Another file, Google pay payment. And then importantly, to make this a proper package, we need to create an init file so create another file and say underscore underscore init underscore underscore dot pi and we'll come back to the init file as soon as we have implemented all of our classes so let's start with the credit card payment class so we can say from dot payment and then say import the payment class and then for our credit card payment class, let's say class, call it credit card payment. And then it's going to extend the payment abstract base class. And then we need to define or implement the pay method. So we can say pay self, because it's going to be an instance method, as I've mentioned. And then we also have an amount of type float. Now, as you can imagine, a credit card payment integration logic can get extremely complex, but we are going to keep it very simple to make sure that you focus on the pattern implementation itself, because I don't want to distract you with some sort of fancy implementation. Instead, I want you to know exactly how to implement the factory method pattern in Python. So let's print out the following. It's gonna be a formatted print. So we'll say successfully paid. I'm going to use the dollar sign and then we'll use string interpolation, pass in the amount. And then we're going to say successfully paid an amount of dollars to merchant using a credit card. And that's all we have to do. So let's go ahead and copy everything here because the other concrete payment implementations will look similar. So for Google Pay, we'll simply change the class name to Google Pay Payment and then successfully paid a certain amount to merchant using 
Google Pay. Again, let's copy that for the PayPal payment class. We're going to call it PayPal payment. And then we'll say successfully paid a certain amount to merchant using PayPal. So now we've successfully implemented our abstract product, which is our payment abstract base class that defines a pay method that takes in an amount of type float. Then we've got three concrete product classes, which is the credit card payment that will simply print out successfully paid a certain amount to merchant using credit card. Google Pay looks similar and PayPal payment too. So now we need to go ahead and create our factory class. So create another file, not in the payment methods package. And then let's call this file payment underscore factory. And then for the payment factory, we are going to use the inspect class. So say from inspect, and we're specifically going to use some important functions in that class and we can therefore say import get members and that'll allow us to get all of the members that form part of a certain package we can also say is class because we're going to specifically only use the classes in the package and then we'll also need to check whether those classes are abstract or not okay and then let's import the entire package, which will be payment underscore methods. And then we can say class, let's call our class payment factory. It's going to extend the object class. And then let's add a global dictionary field. Let's call it payment underscore implementations. Now, the reason we're going to use a dictionary is because a dictionary is a key value pair type data structure. And what we can do with the factory method is to have our keys as the name of the class and then the actual class type as the value. So you'll see what I mean just now. So let's define a method that actually gets all of the implementations in a certain package and then we can add those implementations to this payment implementations dictionary. So let's define a function called load underscore payment underscore methods and it's going to be an instance method and then in here we can go ahead and use lambda to get all of our implementations. In other words, each and every class that extends the payment abstract base class, and then we'll add that to our payment implementations dictionary. But first we are going to create a variable and call it implementations. And then we'll use the get members function. Like I mentioned, if you want to see what this does, let's go to the definition. And you'll see it returns all members of an object as the name and value pairs sorted by name. Optionally, only returns members that satisfy a given predicate. Okay, so let's say we'll pass it the payment methods package and then say comma, then we'll use lambda. I'm going to use the M for members. And then we'll say if the member is a class and not an abstract class, then we are going to add it to our implementations. Okay. And then we'll loop through all of these implementations that we've retrieved from the get members function and we'll say for name underscore type because that's what we get from the get members function in implementations remember it's a key value so the name is the key and the type is the value and then we'll say we'll loop through all of those and then check if it is a class we'll pass it the type and 
it is also a subclass and then we need to pass it the type and we also need to pass it our payments abstract class in other words is a subclass of what particular base class so we'll say underscore payment methods the package dot payment but this will fail in runtime as it is right now because we haven't implemented our init file yet so let's start by adding our payment base class first so say from payment and then import the payment class then all of our concrete payment classes say from credit card payment import credit card payment from google pay payment import google pay payment then from paypal payment import paypal payment okay so now our package is actually successfully configured so if we go back to the factory and complete our implementation then this won't fail when we run our code a little later on okay so we are basically looping through that implementations that we got from the members and then we're saying if the type is a class and it is a subclass of the payments abstract class then only are we going to add it to our payment implementations dictionary so we can say self in other words this instance and then payment implementations and then as the key we'll use the name of the class and as the value the type okay so that's the method that we actually need to load all of our subclasses of the payment abstract class into our payment implementations dictionary so to invoke this method we'll do that from our constructor so underscore underscore init and we always need to say self because it's an instance and then in here we'll say self dot load payment methods so when a new instance of the payment factory class is created the constructor will call the load payments method that will populate our dictionary and then most importantly our factory method remember in the class diagram there was a method called create so let's define that method create again self comma payment type of type string now the payment type will pass through here will basically be the name of the class so to implement our factory method we'll say if payment type is in our dictionary self dot payment underscore implementations then we'll return self dot payment underscore implementations and we'll just specify which one so as the key we'll specify payment type and then return the type as the value there which will be the actual concrete payment class else if we can't find it in our payments implementation dictionary we are going to raise an error so raise a value error and then we'll have a formatted message that says payment type is not currently supported as a payment method in other words if we for example pass through apple pay that is not currently supported it'll raise a value error and say apple pay is not currently supported as a payment method okay so that's all we have to do for our payment factory class and let's go ahead and implement our client logic in our main file so go ahead and create a new file and say underscore underscore main underscore underscore dot pi and then as you know our main file is the entry point to our python application so this is where we are going to implement our client logic the first thing that we need to do is to import the payment factory class so say from and it's in the payment factory file say import payment factory 
and then we need to create a new instance of the payment factory class so let's create a variable and call it factory and then we'll create a new instance of payment factory then also create a variable and call it payment and then we'll invoke factory.create our create function and that is our factory method and then we need to pass in the payment name which needs to be the same as our class name so it's either going to be credit card payment google pay payment or paypal payment so let's start with the credit card payment okay and then we'll invoke the pay function on the resolved payment class and we'll pass in a thousand dollars okay so go ahead and add a breakpoint press f5 then just select python file debug the currently active python file let's step through it with f10 so here you'll see that it actually hits our constructor in the payment factory class that in turn calls the load payment methods function there you'll see that all of the classes gets added to the implementations variable there and then once that's done you can see that it actually added three elements to our dictionary with the keys being credit card payment google pay payment and the paypal payment each with its class type as the values okay and then if we loop through the four each you'll see that the type there is credit card payment so if it is a subclass of payment which it is it'll get added to our dictionary so there you'll see it's got one item credit card payment with its value there then the same is true for the google pay payment and the same will be true for the paypal payment too okay it'll invoke the factory method our create function and in here you'll see that the payment type that we're passing through is credit card it'll check if it's part of this payment implementations dictionary and in fact it is and then it will return as the payment class there the credit card payment class as you can see there and then when we invoke pay you'll see that it prints out successfully paid a thousand dollars to merchant using a credit card so let's go ahead and test this with the google pay payment so you can say google pay payment and then let's run that now i'm going to step over that part also on the create side you'll see that it returns the google pay payment class and then we can step into the pay method if you like and see that it actually hits the pay function on the google pay payment class and therefore prints out successfully paid a thousand dollars to merchant using google pay now one of the advantages of the factory method is that you do not have to change the client code now i just wanted to make that point because you might say but hang on you've been changing it all the time by passing through different payment options here but remember this is a very simple example and normally the payment methods will actually come from a user interface from a console or it might even come via an http request to a rest api so everything here will stay standard in other words this code follows the open close principle because if we want to go and add another payment method this code the client code will be closed for modification but it will be open for extension so in other words with regards to extension we'll go ahead and create another payment class in this payment methods package and then add it as part of the package in this init file and then when we invoke a new payment method for example apple pay payment then that will work without us having to change this client logic but please bear with me for testing purposes we are now hard coding the payment types but as you know this will normally be supplied by a user let's quickly test the paypal payment option two and there you'll see successfully paid a thousand dollars to merchant using paypal now let's try without adding support for now 
to pass Apple Pay and see what happens. Okay, let's debug. So I'm going to step into the factory method, our create function, and then you'll see the payment type is Apple Pay. We can't find it in our payment implementations dictionary and we'll raise a value error. And as you can see there, Apple Pay payment is not currently supported as a payment method. So let's go ahead and add support for it. So the only thing we'll have to do is to add it as part of our package. So let's create a new file, Apple Pay Payment. And then I'm going to copy Google Pay Payment. And then simply change the class name to Apple Pay Payment. And then successfully paid a certain amount to merchant using Apple Pay. Okay. And then we also need to make it part of our package. And import Apple Pay payment. Okay, so the only thing you need to do now is to test if it works. So again, new instance of payment factory. Let's invoke the create method. This time, you should see Apple Pay in our dictionary. And therefore, it also returns it. And when we invoke the pay function, it says successfully paid $1,000 to merchant using Apple Pay. So as you can see, it's extremely simple to implement the factory method pattern in Python. If you enjoyed this video, please go ahead and like it and subscribe to our channel. Till next time.